anything you like. It can be a typical Land Rover wave, it can be on a camp <laughs> wave, if you like. <laughs> Hi and welcome to this, a very rushed episode of Land Rovers Live. As always, I'm Matt Cooper and with me, Jeremy. Hi, it's more emergency than rushed, isn't it? Right. Yes, as, uh, as you may or may not know, it's the last big show of the season this weekend at Peterborough and uh, we're trying to get ready, aren't we, Jeremy? We are indeed trying to get ready and we're not doing a very good job. We've got this lovely Land Rover that's been painted up in the most awesome way. That's almost our news, isn't it? But that, that is pretty well the, ex the extent of it as well. If you're going to be at Peter, we'll be able to come and admire this lovely little beast. She's been hand-painted by Graham. Yes, and the paint is still wet on it. it so uh, we've delivered <laughs> it by hand to Maasai, who are uh, going to trick it out with some lovely bits and pieces. I'll try not to get it under this clothing, which is some 1948 original equipment. I think they're, they're going to be beautiful show as well. Will they be there? Uh, yes, they will be there. They're, they're all I wouldn't the mind a shirt. pair of matching trousers to go with this lovely shirt. I I mean, like the ones that I've got. I'm not wearing them. but I You're not? Uh, no, yeah. we are wearing those. We're yeah. to a funeral like this, apparently. Yes, quite. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yes, it's a very nice range of clothing and it's very kind of um, oldie water school, except that it's updated with Velcro pockets, so you can that? get into there really quick. And, and personalised to the year you were born as well, Jim. <sighs> That's enough of that. <laughs> anyway, on with the show. So earlier in the week, and it's been a bit of an arty week really, hasn't it? We, very uh, arty. Well, Jeremy found a, a, a very talented young Yeah, a young chap called Oliver, uh, who comes from Shrewsbury, and he's got an absolute talent for drawing Land Rovers. Mm. Shame he can't paint them and repair them, but he can draw them. Yeah, where, where, did, where did you find out about him then, Jem? Uh, from a young lady called Catherine, who knows art college and, you know, all these connections yeah. I've got in that sort of area. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I thought you were going to say from the, you, the YouTube video that you showed me, but never mind. No, so, no. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, well, well this, this lad, uh, Oliver Davenport, he's... Uh, well, he's at Horticultural College, isn't he? But his hobby is drawing, and then specifically drawing Land Rovers, is it not? Yes, yes, indeed. Um, um, we'll, we'll put a link on the screen below to the to one of his first videos. But uh, we decided to get him into our office and uh, see what he could do. Uh, four hours it took him to the, in the office there. Four hours it took him. Which I think is it's almost a Rolf, Rolf Harris-type territory, isn't it? <laughs> 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 let, let's go see how he got on. <laughs> Indeed. Here on Land Rovers Live, we're always looking out for the more interesting things. And recently, Jeremy handed me a link to a, a lad who, well, it was a YouTube video where he actually drew up large scale Land Rovers freehand. It was uh, really interesting. So, after a little bit of digging, we managed to find him, and here he is, Ollie. Hey, yeah. So, uh, why on earth do you draw Land Rovers? Um, I bought, well, I go to an agricultural university called Harper Adams, um, and after speaking to quite a lot of my friends there who are really keen on you know, engineering, Land Rovers, uh, doing all the sort of 4x4 off-roading stuff, um, I thought, well, you know, if I started drawing Land Rovers, I might be able to sort of promote my name a bit and get, you know, and sort of get my name out there, and that's where it all began, really. So. Well, that's worked out well for you. You've got your yeah. name out there to the point of uh, we can actually find <laughs> yeah, you. So, yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to let you get on and, uh, okay. and draw for yeah. us today, but uh, and we'll bring, well, we'll see how it gets on throughout the show. We'll also come back to you with a really interesting competition that we've got today. Well, he's had three hours now, so let's have a look how he's done. I believe he's finished our new drawing. Well, here it is. Yeah, 
it's taken about three hours. Uh, pretty pleased with it to be honest with you. I hope you guys like it. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. So, what? Well, how have you done it for a start? Uh, basically, the process I use with this is uh, I do some faint outlines using projector, I do some faint tram lines, and then uh, I'll have the image on maybe a smaller device like an iPad or like a phone, mm. and I'll just try and work from that. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's. It's a really nice job, lovely bit of detail in there, and uh, you've shown it at the bottom, yeah. so it uh, adorns our yeah. office for years to come. Uh, and if you want to know a little bit more information about Ollie, he's got a Facebook page, we'll put the, the links on the screen below, and he doesn't just draw Land Rovers, he just draws a whole host of stuff, so do check him out. Right, okay, well that's absolutely amazing, I wish I'd been there to see him draw it, but now I've seen that, it's a brilliant bit of drawing, and it's an amazing talent, and interestingly Matt, what have you got for competition prize? Well, he's got a really unique competition, a really sort of... I'm really excited by this. Uh, so what we want you to do is send us your favourite pictures of your own Land Rovers out and about. And Ollie is very kindly going to choose his favourite one, draw it up. We're going to get it framed up, aren't we? And, uh, and delivered to you. So a, a hand-drawn illustration of your own Land Rover. Yeah. I, I, it doesn't get much better it, than that, does it? It doesn't, so. no. And it will be personalised, of course, because you'll have the original picture and you'll have the Land Rover drawing to go with it. Nothing else like it in the world. Can't beat it. That's it. So how do we win? Well, we win by sending us the pictures through, uh, and on this occasion, we'll send them on Twitter and or Facebook. Really, doesn't matter, does okay. it? Okay. Yeah. So the the usual links are on the screen below. Uh, then next up, we better have a look at workshop. We haven't done one for a while, have we? No, we haven't. But uh, what did you get up to? There's something about gas inversion or some engines. Oh, yeah. So uh, as most of you may or may not know, on TDI 300 engines for Discoveries and in the Range Rovers. Uh, they have something called EGR, the Exhaust Gas Recirculation, which, uh, which has probably seemed like a good idea at the time, but actually 10 years on is, is a bit of a pain. So we sent Amy down to Black Country 4 before to have a look at the EGR blanking kits, what they're for, why you do it, and, uh, and something like that. Uh, my name is Brett from Black Country 4x4. Today we're going to be doing a EGR valve removal, which is an exhaust gas recirculation valve. Uh, I'm going to talk you through some of the steps. It's on numerous vehicles, these parties, uh, 300 TDI, TD5, and all it does is recirculate any unburnt gases through the exhaust back into the inlet system for extra burning. For this task, we'll need the following parts. Yeah, it steps quite easily. There's the uh, pipe that you have to replace on the top, uh, and there's just the blanking pipe basically, which comes with the nuts and bolts to fit it with a gasket. EGR, or exhaust gas recirculation, allows a controlled amount of the exhaust gases back into the air intake of the TD5 and 300 TDI engines. The reason for this is to reduce the amount of nitrous oxide being thrown out the back and also to quieten the engine slightly. Whilst this does sound like a good idea, it has a few downsides. It reduces the combustion temperature, which means that less fuel is burned off. This reduces the performance of your engine. These days, we can't think of a reason to not remove the EGR system. You should see an increase in power. Many also report higher MPG figures, and over the life of your engine, you will have removed some pretty ugly problems that may occur later on. EGR blanking will not affect your vehicle on MOT day, and it does not harm your engine in any way. Right, I'm going to remove the air box just to give me some accessibility to the, to the pipes. Uh, let's get down there. Just taking the, the uh, air box pipe off of the turbo. Remove this out of the way, just take that little breather out. And that reveals everything really. Obviously the wiring loom which is redundant once the valve's removed. We just took that out of the way nicely. Also the top intercooler hose. Oh. 
remove that pipe out of the way. That's redundant now because we won't be using this pipe afterwards. You can see all the carbon deposits inside the inlet there from where the gas has gone back into there. Now I've left these soaking for about half an hour now. These bolts, I'm going to use a 6 Allen key. Make sure it's in there because they tend to round or snap. Now I'm lucky that one's coming out quite easy today. One on the bottom. And there's the valve that you remove. Now we've removed the EGR valve, we need to block up the hole in the exhaust. For that we use the EGR valve blanking kit. In this kit comes the plate, the heat proof gasket and two 8mm nuts. Here's the hole in the uh, exhaust manifold which we're going to block and we do this just by putting the plate on there. Drop the 8mm bolt in the bottom. As you can see, fitting the EGR blanking kit is very and simple, but that top. is only the first step of the job. We now need to clean all those deposits that have built up in the intercooler over time. Upon inspection, up. if you find that the inlet manifold is coked up, then we recommend removing and cleaning that also. This will ensure that your engine is running as efficiently as it can, and the intercooler can do its job properly. Now I've blocked up the hole in the exhaust manifold, I'm going to be removing the inlet manifold, and the intercooler for thorough cleaning in the workshop. This is just to get rid of all the deposits from the exhaust gases from the exhaust, which will enable better and smoother running for the engine. We are using a strong degreaser cleaner and flushing through the parts until clean fluid runs out. And once these are back on, the EGR is finished. Do let us know how the EGR affects the performance of your vehicle. We'd love to hear. And now we're just drying these thoroughly to get any fluids out that's left in there. Best thing to do is to leave them overnight uh, in an air in, in a dry area, just to let any other fluids dry out of them properly before fitting them. Coming up on the next workshop, we'll be taking a look at weatherproofing your Land Rover. Winter is coming. As always, our workshops are brought to you by Bearmac, and this month's workshop is Black Country 4x4, nominated by Neil Enser of West Midlands 4x4. Well, I'm glad I don't have to worry about my EGR, whatever the hell it is. As long as the Land Rover works, that's all I care about. Somebody else can fix it. But uh, just talking about fixing Land Rovers and finding ones to repair, we sent Matt off to go and have a look at the uh, auction room, which is not far from us. Uh, it's just down the road at Lemster, and they're called... Brightwells. It's, it's just down the road at Lemster, and they're called Brightwells. And we've got some excellent advice on the general things you're looking for if you're trying to buy a Land Rover auction. We're going to take that plunge. Uh, and uh, I would imagine you'd be all excited by the prospects of what you can do and can't do at auctions. There were some surprises, I have to say. Some Land Rovers went for a lot less money than we expected, and some for a lot more. But uh, there's good news for those looking for a, a good second car, like a Freelander or a Discovery. Some bargains out there to be had, and Matt can explain how. Today we've come to Brightwell's auction to really see how or why people would buy and sell at auction. So joining me is Richard from Brightwell's. Hi Richard. Hi Matt. Um, what was selling well? Defender is selling well. You know, you can see that from the prices we've achieved today. It's selling well for the time of year. Freelander is a little bit off um, and Discoveries, we had a couple of newer Discoveries and yeah, they make the price, they make Discoveries, they're pretty run-of-the-mill sort of cars really. What would, what would you need to know to come into an auction? The first thing I would say is do some market research. See what prices things are available out there. Set yourself a budget in, in your own mind then of what you think you're going to do and where you're going to go to buy it. If you're coming to auction, there'll be a buyer's fee. So you need to take that into consideration as well. Have the cash available. You know, most places, if you're going to go and buy something privately or through auction, you need to pay on the day. I mean, there's no finance agreements. If you're going to go and buy from a main dealer or a, a garage, you may well be able to get finance, of course. Um, you will also be able to get warranties with those, but you will pay more money. So whatever happens, you will pay more money in a garage. We believe that Land Rover forecourt prices are generally around about 20 to 25 percent higher than an auction. Uh, we think that private sales are generally around about 10 or 15 percent above auction. But sometimes you find a deal out there, sometimes you find a deal here. You know, it does happen. What sort of trends have you seen in recent months over there? 
Now, a good, clean Land Rover Defenders over the last, I'd say, couple of years, really, to be fair, have started to appreciate in price. Older ones, especially the 300 TDI market. The TD5 market is starting to firm up a bit. You'd have seen that today. If you said to me, what are the best-selling Defenders? Short wheelbase county station wagon out there by a huge mile. It's the most expensive version that's around. Um, not many of them made. Uh, anniversary models sell for an absolute premium. Then you would be saying that the 90 hardtop is, is next uh, because people like to buy the 90 hardtop because it's more secure for storing things in than a, than a pickup version would be. But those are particularly well demanded. If you want some advice, put windows in the side of your Defender 90 hardtop and it'll be worth a lot more money when you come to resell it. Oh, well, that, that's a great tip. It's a discussion mm. we often have about that. So, mm. uh, well, you've got a busy day ahead of you as, mm. uh, as auctioneer. So, uh, got to take the money now. That's it. Off Get to sell some cars. <laughs> great. Thanks very much. Lot number twenty-two is the three number two. There you go. It should be eight, really. interesting prices of, of the different vehicles. Take, for example, the, the Freelanders today mm. that, that went through, sold for what I would say would be about 50% of what you would see them on Auto Trader. The TD4s are, compared to the book values, relatively all right. So what I mean by that is they're not strong, but they're not weak. So they're relatively okay. They look cheap. They do look cheap. There's no two ways. But I personally, I think the Freelander 2 is way 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 too cheap at the moment because if you look at the prices that we're getting for that compared to about a year ago and I know that there are newer versions and all the rest of it you know for the ones that we've had on sale today but they do look cheap and if you put them up against their competition rivals so your CRVs and that, that sort of mid-range 4x4 um, they're cheap I think they are cheap for, if for a Land Rover they are cheap. Uh, it's, it's been really interesting. We followed a few of the vehicles through today, um, and, and as you say, the, the the discoveries. There's nothing really to talk about there. They fetch more or less what, what you'd expect. Mm. But the, the differences in the different Defender derivatives were quite uh, yeah. quite amazing. On the whole, the Defenders did very well, and we saw a vehicle towards the end of the sale, which was a, a 1989 uh, military-looking yes. Land Rover, yeah, which, yeah. which I would have thought. If I was to go and buy that from a man in the street, I'd be looking to pay not a lot for it. It wasn't a, no. a tidy example of a vehicle, but it went for uh, about three and a half thousand. Yeah, it was, a, end, it was, was a very strong bid. Yeah, I, sometimes people will come to a sale like this and they will pay a little bit more for something. And as we've said about setting yourself a budget and so on. Um, if you want to go somewhere and find something, which is like that's that's more on the unique side of things, isn't it? And you won't you won't find a lot of those around all the time. But then if you put that alongside some other the vehicles that we've had here today, which we do get all the time, I would also think they were quite expensive on occasion. Mm. Uh, and it's all about supply on the day, bit of competition. That's what happens in auction sometimes. Yeah. And the other standout vehicle for me was the 110 County Station Wagon, which, mm. uh, which was a 96. So yeah. a relatively old vehicle now, fitted with a TDI 300. And a lot of people um, are looking for them though, Matt, you know, a lot of people are looking for them. You guys at Brightwells are not afraid to, to put your money where your mouth is either, and you guys have ended up with, with this, a uh, 90, yeah. 97 two, TDI 300. Bit, uh, bit of an unusual situation for us. What happened was we had somebody bid online and uh, when you bid online, you put down a deposit and you have to register and so on. So we knew who the buyer was and they'd paid their, their deposit, etc. Before they settled in full for the vehicle, they said that they didn't want it, they'd made a mistake. So we ended up with the vehicle. At the time, we thought, shall we put it back through the sale? And I discussed it with uh, sales manager Steve and we said, it'll be worth more money. Keep it.
that's absolutely amazing. So really, for a couple of thousand pounds, I could get a Freelander or something? I mean... Yeah, there's a Freelander 2, uh, as you were saying, uh, fantastically cheap at the moment. Seriously tempted. But I still will not part with my 110 station wagon, uh, the rust expensive ones. It'll get a little bit of rust on it, a few dents here and there. Yes. Anyway, uh, so... We've had a crack on, haven't we? We've had a crack on, because we've got to get this and a lot of other stuff to Peterborough. And uh, what we really need to know is to sign off, uh, remind you that you can catch us on Twitter, Facebook, G+, all the social network links are down here. Visit the blog, of course, because Jonathan posts lots of regular interesting news up there. And we're going to sign off in the new way. This is the guys that wave. We practice this. We have. <laughs>